This week on Gun Talk Hunt, I'm joined by Seth Swercheck of Hornady. And I'm telling you what, we're in Utah on this episode talking NRL hunter matches and what ammo you need for your next match. Hey, I'm KJ, dedicated lifelong hunter here. If you've got an interest in all things hunting, you're in the right spot. Whether chasing quail across the plains of Oklahoma or in pursuit of elk in the backcountry of British Columbia, you'll always find me on the hunt. All right, welcome in all you Gun Talk Hunters. I'm your host, KJ, and today we're out at the, what, Price, Utah? Price, Utah. North Springs Range, shooting the NRL Hunter Match, which Hornady sponsors. And Hornady brought me in uh, with a bunch of other media folks uh, to shoot this match. My first NRL match, not yours. Well, I, this is my first sanctioned NRL Hunter match. Okay. So I've shot, in, I've shot, in, I've shot several matches um, that were this mm-hmm. style before the NRL Hunter was a thing. Okay. Um, and then uh, this is my first sanctioned match, and <sighs> I enjoy this platform. Oh, it's it's unique because it it kind of blends in the long distance shooting thing with skills that every hunter needs: glassing targets, gear manipulation, uh-huh. fundamentals of marksmanship. So it kind of encompasses everything. And it happens actually in a time where there's not a whole lot, go- not a whole lot of hunting seasons going on. Right, unless you're going to Africa, there's not a lot yeah. in the summer. Yeah. Um, so Hornady sponsors this. We're shooting Hornady. We're shooting six millimeter Creedmoor. So mm-hmm. why did you pick? Because we didn't go. Well, I want to shoot a six five Creedmoor. I want to shoot. You guys kind of selected the six millimeter Creedmoor for us to shoot. Mm-hmm. Why did you select that platform? So the reason we opted for six Creedmoor instead of something like a six five yeah. or a six five PRC even is the group that we assembled for this event. We wanted to maximize the training and the fun yeah. for a group of media and content creators that primarily come from the hunting environment. Yeah. And so the six Creedmoor compared to other cartridges. It's flatter trajectory, yeah. it's less wind drift, and it's mm-hmm. less recoil. So you're able to spot your impact. So it made sense. We were going to be shooting factory built rifles in what's called the skills division. So six Creedmoors, legal to yeah. use for this uh, for that division. Okay. And it just made a lot of sense. Less recoil, flatter trajectory, less wind, more fun. All things I, I really like, but what... So I know I've I've heard Tyler Friel talking about it, and he is talking about like utilizing like match ammunition, mm-hmm. specifically Hornady, for hunting purposes. Sure. Why is why are are folks starting to lean towards that way? I think a lot of people like the accuracy that match yeah. ammunition gives them. There are trade offs though, and as a company, Hornady doesn't recommend hunting with match ammo because <laughs> the bullet isn't designed to perform right. like that and sometimes they perform really really well yeah. and sometimes they don't perform at all and that gray area is a problem okay it is a gray area that's a problem but i have firsthand knowledge of this because i was on a hunt at ftw we were using eldm i think we were using 140 143s 147s 147s 147 65 creep morse um deer went 20 yards? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, smoked him um, with match ammunition. For sure. And that's, but we were doing a little bit of long range shooting, long distance shooting, and going, you know, well, what would be the outcome if you did X? Mm-hmm. Like, if you did your match shooting and then you took it out and did that. I had no issues with it. And we had other folks in the camp, same thing. Right. Well, and a lot of that comes down to the bullet construction. Yeah. So on a match bullet, the jacket's very, very thin. So if you shoot an animal at a, uh, maybe a non-traditional extended yeah. range, the velocity is bled off and that bullet's likely going to perform like right. a traditional lead core hunting bullet. The catch 22 is because that jacket's so thin, that jacket controls how fast that lead flows out of the bullet, that okay. mushroom. So if you impact a bone or you impact with very high velocity, yeah. you know, at those more traditional sub 300 uh-huh. yard ranges, that jacket just can't hold together and you end up with a hand grenade type of effect, which sometimes can be effective and other times it depends. can be. Depends, I mean, it's shot placement. Always wins. I mean, it's it's shot placement is what you're dealing with, but I just thought it was interesting that Friel was, 
was talking about that so heavily and and utilizing the yield like match ammunition for like hunting purposes. Sure, I thought it was interesting. Um, you got to know what what your bullet construction is, and there's true. things that uh, even if you know the bullet construction that you might not know, like. Uh, we insert a polymer tip and how far we crowd the lead core to the lead okay. tip can impact hmm. how that bullet upsets when you shoot an animal okay. with it. So, you know, that's one thing that you don't know how much uh, crowding we put on yeah. that tip. So, um, so our, I, I, like, I don't know how to approach this question because I feel like most of the hunting public, don't understand bullet construction. Hundred percent, I would agree. Hey, like, I mean, how could how can we sit there and we we talk about this? Because like you've got to know, understand what your bullet is, what the bullet construction is, in in order to make the right choice for your hunting rig. Hundred percent. So what that's are you that's tell the Hornady me? marketing job, right? Yeah. And with uh, our podcast, the Hornady podcast. We've been trying to put that information out uh -huh. in larger form to get more people educated. Yeah. Um, and we've got, yeah, several podcasts. Are, but are people really willing to like seek out that information uh, or are they just like, oh yeah, that looks like a hunting bullet. I'm sure it'll work in my gun. Yeah, I think there's a growing community okay. that is, especially I feel well, like- Well, you give them more hope than I do. Because well, I'll be honest with you, Seth. Like I don't give most folks credit for like doing their due diligence, yeah. like going out and they buy a new hunting rifle. They this is the like prime example. They go out and they buy a new hunting rifle and they go, I like Hornady. I like the ELDX. I'm going to buy that and that's all I need. Like that might work. Yeah. But what happens if it doesn't? Like, yeah. are you willing to like take the $40 hit and go, that didn't try. work. I'm try gonna something try, else. I'm going to try a different grain or, yep. or, or a different bullet. That's a good, a good point. And there is a large community like that. I do feel like there is a growing community of people that they're not hunting like their grandfathers anymore. They're building rifles. They're buying semi-custom rifles. They're trying oh, different bullets. They're hand You're loading. opening up, dude. You're opening up so much right now. Well, in chronographs, <laughs> right. chronograph people are more people with chronographs, yeah. more people with ballistic calculators. I feel like the community of the purposefully educated hunter is growing yeah. for sure. So, do you see that as like the new hunters that are entering the market, or? Like, is it a growing, is it a, a result of the growing, like, access to information? I think it's a little bit of both. I would say, obviously, the younger hunter yeah. coming up, generally that younger crowd, more gear-driven. Yeah. So they're, you know, more different bipods and all that stuff. But I do see an older community. Like, my father's a great example. Yeah. My father hunted in the exact same fashion for many decades, and then all of a sudden... Well, I'm going to build some custom rifles. I better get some first focal plane mill scopes that so, you're dropping big money on. How did he come to that realization? Like, is he seeing what you're doing? Or yeah, he's, yeah, we went to a, a, a PRS match and was no like, kid. you guys can do this with guns? Well, guess I'm going to have to do that now. Are you serious? And I feel like he's not, you know, that's not a, <laughs> he's not an exception. That, that's right. a pretty standard thing. And uh, it's just, access to information is key. It, 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 right now, it's everything. Um, but access to matches like the NRL Hunter that we're doing here. And this is my first foray into an NRL Hunter match. I feel like I'm doing good. Like, I feel like like the gun's shooting good. The ammo though, like has performed because I'm able to track and it just works in this gun. And we put this thing through some heavy work. There's heavy winds. There is vertical wind because we're shooting over cliffs. Yeah. There's different canyons. And then the spine we shot on today, depending on what side of the spine you shot on, you got a left to right or, or a right left, to left. Yeah. And that's, that's crazy. Some of the targets were a tenth of a mil wide. We were shooting those prairie dog targets at nearly 300 yards that were a tenth of a mil wide. Yeah. And it, uh, it's, it's incredible. It's important. And managing your gear and, and all of the things that go into gear. Yeah. Uh, when you're on the in the stress of a timed environment, yeah, man. Well, and I think that's one way that NRL hunter matches like kind of separate themselves because you go into a blind, like you're sitting down in a staging area, you're sitting there, and you're going, "Well, I've got another like 15 minutes till my till I'm on the clock." You haven't seen the stage, no and you one, won't see the stage. No one talks about it. 
No. That's one thing I really noticed. And I, did you notice that? Oh uh, yeah. Oh for sure. No one. Really That's part talks of the game. That's is the game. Because in the precision rifle series type matches, you get one person comes off the stage. Yeah. Oh, I gave it six tenths of a mil, and I'm running a six millimeter Creedmoor with a 108. So everybody else goes, oh. He gave it six tenths of a mil. Mm-hmm. And this, you get the communal aspect before the stage, yeah, but after the incredible. stage, you move upstream. So you yeah. move by yourself to the next stage. So I think that makes you a better shooter. Yeah. You have to you have to make a call. That's good to be forced yeah. into that. You have to trust the call and you have to make the correction when you're wrong. And right. doing all of that together under the stress of being on the clock, trying to get, you know, maybe a gun that's not feeding yeah. or managing the dope on your arm or finding the targets. There's Well, that's one thing that I've noticed and, and, and maybe you could shed some light on this. So what I'm noticing um, from yesterday and today, um, like say 400 and 600 yards, I'm two tenths to three tenths off very consistently. Okay. So is my gun speeding up? No, I would almost guarantee you that's a zero problem. Really? Yep. If it's consistent at every range, then it's an offset, which could okay. be corrected by zero. And a whole other, we could do an hour long podcast on what's called zero angle. Yeah. Um, and how you set up a rifle with a data program, instead of zero range, you'd set it up using the departure angle of the barrel. Okay. Uh, it it's, it's, seems complex. It's not quite as bad as it sounds, but uh, going from, you know, we were shooting at K&M right. at 300 feet above sea level. Yeah. We verified dope when we got here, but mm-hmm. we're shooting at 6,500 feet. Plus, that's going to be compounded by a couple things. One, you, you will experience some vertical wind out here. Right. And then you are experiencing uh, aerodynamic jump. So right. the crosswind will increase or decrease your elevation. There's the elevation component of a crosswind. And there's potential that you do get vertical wind. We're, we're shooting, you know, you get wind that'll... When you look at a, a big canyon, imagine it being flooded with water. Yeah. And how the water flows right. is how the wind's going to flow. And so you can get some vertical wind. Yeah. It, it, it's a miracle I hit a target today. Yeah. Because I, w- I would sit there and have to think, like, okay, like the targets that I missed, two tenths off. Yep. Like, just high. Like, and so, like, that's... That, God, that's interesting. Like, there's so much that goes into this game. Like, okay, I'm going to, I got to take a break here. But on the other side of the break, like, what I really kind of want to jump into is, is one, how do people like, what are the limiting factors on getting into something like this? Sure. Um, And the ballistic calculator uh, Ford off that is out there that Hornady produces and how easy and how robust it is. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to jump in that right after this. Now, just diving, we're going to take a 90-degree turn, and we're going to stop talking about NRL hunter matches. We're going to jump into why you would need something from Rossi. Uh, maybe like a R95 triple black and 3030 Winchester, uh, a giant pick rail on it, a large lever loop uh, wrapped in paracord, uh, synthetic stock, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's freaking unreal. It's uh, suppressor and optics ready, so it's it's cut already. Uh, but 3030 Winchester, barrel length of 16 and a half overall inches. Um, this is a cool one. Um, 3030 was what I took my first deer with. Um, and the Rossi R95 in triple black is pretty dang solid. Um, you know... You look at these guns nowadays that they're coming back and lever guns have really kind of enjoyed a renewed um, spirit. Uh, people are getting into them. You know, it's one of those things that honestly, really, the government's not coming after. <laughs> so it behooves you to have a couple in your safe. And I would say I've shot the Rossi R95 triple black in 33 Winchester before. And absolutely, I've got one on order. So. So, just saying, you may want to get it. And I'm, you know what? It's a walnut action rifle, so I apologize that. But it's all black. It looks sleek. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, the triple black, beautiful gun, ready to rock. And Voodoo, the Voodoo X optics from EOTech. Now they have a one to eight. They have a eight to thirty-two. They have a three and a half to eighteen. Okay, so from doing this 
from doing this match, from doing an NRL Hunter match, what I'm going to tell you right now is, is I would, I would probably look at really closely at the three and a half to 18. And the only reason I would say that is, is because I would, I don't think I would use all 32 power magnification because you've got to really run um, the magnification adjust knob on that. Um, you, you're going to have to adjust a lot during these matches. And so a three and a half to 18 kind of for me is, is like the right balance of it and aircraft grade aluminum on these suckers. They are nice and, and a couple of different uh, reticle options for you. But second focal plane makes it ideal for hunting. And look, if you're going to run one of these NRL hunter matches and you just want to improve your hunting, run it as such, run what you're going to run, run your hunting rig, man, run your hunting rig. Because that's how you're going to learn more about what you're going to do in the field rather than gaming it and, and all this extra equipment. So, and that's, it's just a, a, a friendly kind of FYI. I mean, these are fog resistant, they're shock resistant or water resistant. They have anti-reflective lenses. Just give them a look. I'm, I promise you they've got a sunshade. They've got everything to make you successful in the field. EOTech, Inc., Dot com to find out more and since we're in the game of running what you would run in the field i absolutely have a couple remington 700 triggers in my guns from timney triggers um i i really like the elite hunter version um it's an adjustable trigger uh actually the factory setting comes at three pounds uh, so you can choose your options and how it comes to you um, from two pounds all the way up to four pounds and if you're shooting a really high precision match, which let's be honest, a high precision match where you're trying to be very precise is no different than what you're trying to do in the field. You heard me right. What you do on practice is what you should be doing in the field. We owe it to animals, one shot, one kill. Um, but find out more at Timney Triggers. Dot com and check out your next Remington 700 trigger and Ruger. And they offer the American Gen 2 in so many different calibers. I'm not going to list them all because I've already done that and I got wind. I uh, got really tired on that one. But the standard version is probably what is going to be geared towards what I would, could see a lot of NRL Hunter, especially the guys that are getting new into this, like myself. Um, this is probably a great option for you because it's got a spiral fluted barrel. Um, it's got adjustable uh, comb height and it's got adjustable length of pull um, via some spacers. So when you start looking at that, I mean, and it's got a splatter finish stock, but the stock I'm not as much worried about. It's the adjustability of the American Gen 2 that I really love. Um, but I mean, it's threaded. So if you want to run a brake on it, you can run their brake. Um, or if you want to run it as a suppressed gun, you can absolutely run it as a suppressed gun and an adjustable trigger. So if you're looking for an option to run your next NRL hunter match, this is going to allow you to meet that factory setting, the factory um, class, and it's going to be lightweight and it's going to be highly accurate because every single one that I've shot is very accurate. And yes, they have them in six millimeter Creedmoor, 22 arc, six, five Creedmoor, um, so they offer them in those popular calibers that seem to be out there in the NRL Hunter matches. So find out more at Ruger.com. And Range Ready, if you're looking for your next class, I highly recommend you look at RangeReadyStudios.com for your next class entry because if you're talking about shooting matches, no matter if you take a pistol match or a rifle match or a USPSA or IDPA, whatever you select, especially like when running these matches you want to be able to press the trigger correctly and what did you see what did you feel that's one of chris serino's like man that's his gospel right there and it all translate whether you take a pistol class from range ready studios or a rifle class they all like the principles of marksmanship apply to everything so just think about it range ready studios.com Let's get back to the show. All right, we're back with Seth of Hornady, and 
I'm not going to butcher your last name. Swarzik? Swarzik, yeah. Nailed it. Unless you're right. Poland. Uh, yeah. Then, then what is it? Schwarzschuk. Really? Yeah. Huh. Learn something every day. Yeah. All right. Limiting, fa well, okay. Limiting factors on someone getting into like matches like this. Because we met a guy today, dude, first match, and he looked like he was wild. Frazzled. Yeah. He, Evan. I think, I think his name was Evan. Um, Evan, if you do watch this, like, I'm not talking bad about you, but like that's like good on him 100 for coming in like not, outside your not, comfort not zone knowing anybody like just coming in and going you know what like this is cool i think i might want to get into it i'm sure he shot great today but like how what are the limiting factors that you see on jumping into something sure. like this this is different nrl hunter specifically different than say something like the precision rifle series yeah. uh in that i feel like there is less bars of entry i th yeah. see the first and the biggest uh, limiting factors that people get involved is their own ego <laughs> is like is get Damn. getting working up the courage to like i'm going to register for a match yeah and i'm going to go and i'm not going to do i'm going to get my butt kicked <laughs> yeah it's it's a, it's hard to do and so sometimes getting out of your own way is the biggest thing and then two is there are some equipment things you know that you need yeah. and what i like about the nrl hunter specifically with the skills division and you see this a little bit with PRS, but this NRL Hunter, it's a hunter. Yes. You can come here with a factory Tika T3 yeah. with a bipod, a good scope yeah. that you can dial, and a rangefinder and a pair of binoculars. And get it done. And you can compete in the match. And you know what? The people that win the match could win the match with that equipment. It's that not is a, it's, a good point. It's not a, a gear-driven game. There are some, you know, like some bipods are better than others. Yes. And some guns may be. But... You don't need a ton of Gucci gear. You have a factory Seekins well, Havoc, a factory Tika, a factory okay. Browning. So that's one thing that I think a lot of guys, I used to be this guy. I used to be this guy. They get wrapped around the axles of gear. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's a very good point because we shot with a uh, professional today. His name is Brady. Dude, phenomenal shooter. And his efficiency and of movement mm -hmm. was outstanding. I mean, it was effortless. He knew where he was going to set his back, his pack. He knew how he set up his tripod. He moved effortlessly through each single stage. Mm -hmm. Like it was impressive to watch. And you're right, he could do it with a factory gun. Yeah, uh, my one of my favorite sayings. It's it's the nut behind the bolt. That's right. And that that usually works. So some bars of entry, you have to have a rifle that shoots. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. uh, I would recommend something like 6.5 Creedmoor. You could get it done with a 308. Yeah. You could get it done with some uh, more traditional cartridge. Yeah. If you if you brought a Magnum, like a 7 Mag, for example, ballistically it would be good, but the recoil is a little high. Yeah. But a, a, a prime example would be a Tika T3 yeah. in a 6.5 Creedmoor with a good scope you can dial on, a sandbag in the back, and... Uh, you know, a tripod. A tripod. A tripod's pretty important. I mean, yeah. I but mean, I feel like a lot of hunters, especially where we're at right uh -huh. now in Utah, the Western hunter, the the hunter on the Great Plains, that's standard kit. Oh yeah. You you don't yeah. go hunting well, that's, without a tripod. That's my standard kit. Like, yep. and I I kind of look at this match um, as stuff that I would actually use in the field, and this is going to kind of lead into Ford off. Um, is I use Ford off in the field mm -hmm. like because i don't take a range card i don't build out a dope card when yeah, i go out data. into the field like right. i don't have my hard data in the field i have ford off like that's what i use when i get to camp i slide in i range i get my environmentals and i'm going ford off has it so i always have access to it right so explain what hornady ford off is and why it would be useful for someone in like an nrl situation PRS situation or a hunting scenario. Yeah. So PR, uh, excuse me, uh, Ford off is just a ballistic calculator yep. and ballistic calculators have been around for a very long time. And one of the keys, one of the, the sources of pride for Hornady is that it's free. <laughs> there are some paid features in there that are nice to have, yeah. but you get full access to our bullet library and all of the, you know, the features you need to, to use. You're not using any paid features and you no, can run a match with I, it. Yeah. So it's, it's free great. of charge. You can download it, iOS or Android. Mm -hmm. And what makes it different than a, a, any other ballistic calculator is BC, ballistic yep. coefficient. We've all heard that. BC calculators use ballistic coefficient right. to, to determine your trajectory. 
and it leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. It, it's not as accurate, and it's not as accurate over a wide uh, array of environments. Right. And so what Fordoff uses is drag coefficient solutions, right. which is the, you can think of it like this. BC is like taking a snapshot of how your bullet performs. Mm -hmm. Fordoff takes a 4K video of how your bullet performs. Okay. So that's the different resolution. Um, God, yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah. Like if you think of it that way. Yeah. And right. another example would be, all right, you can think of a ballistic calculator as like uh, determining how much fuel you're going to need to drive somewhere. Okay. So you need to know the miles per gallon, right? Right. So if you drive a Ford Ranger, a BC is like comparing that Ford Ranger to an F-150. Right. They're both trucks. So right. it's got this BC. That's not how it is. Ford off uses your Ford Ranger to determine right. your miles per gallon. So it's a much All the finer resolution of how the bullet yeah. actually performs. And it's free of charge. And you don't need cell phone reception to use it. Once you have it downloaded That's on key. your phone, you can put your phone in airplane mode, go into the back country, and you always have yeah. always have access. Yeah, and that's one that's one of the things I noticed out here. We have, I mean, out at the North Springs range, we have like, I have one bar of LTE, which sometimes. is like sometimes. Yeah, and I just go in and and I've got my hard data, but I'll go in and just verify like, all right, yeah, it's still matching up, like everything's still the same. Yep. Um, so that's been really nice to be able to access like when we don't have that good a reception, which is which is ridiculous to think about nowadays. They should have freaking cell phone towers everywhere. Yeah, it is. Everywhere. Weird. I mean, I, I live in an area where I don't have cell phone service in my house. What? Yeah. And it's, how, did, how do you make that work? I love it. Oh, Wi-Fi, those handy. Now I'm thinking that might be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really, that would be nice. Not to have cell phone service in your home. Yeah. Holy crap. You, it's amazing. So you connect to Wi-Fi. No, it don't connect to Wi-Fi. No, but, do not But if you want to be no, disconnected, you're you disconnected. Don't connect to Wi-Fi. Don't connect to Wi-Fi. Just don't do it. Yeah. Well, so what's little things? What's so as your first like real sanctioned match? Are you shooting amateur pro? What so are you shooting? I'm shooting skills as well, just like everybody okay, yeah, else. Yeah. So the skills. The reason for that is, I wanted all of the media and all of the content creators and all of the sponsoring companies yeah. that are that are part of this event. I wanted all of us to have fun, and we're a lot of meat-eating, red-blooded dudes out there. Yeah. And sometimes we have a tendency as a species to get fixated wow. on competition. Dude, yeah. whether, I don't care if you're rolling around on the jujitsu mats, yeah. if there's two guys shooting together in a hay field, they're going to get competitive. Or you're if right. you get a bunch of testosterone on a mountain <laughs> trying to hit you're targets. Right. And so I wanted it to be, hey, we're not walking yeah. the prize table. Yes, we're keeping score, but let's let's keep it about what it's you let's know, get the heart civilized of what we're doing. here yeah yeah well it's 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 more about learning um exactly. and I, I think i think so it, skills division is open to everybody yes. like if you want to enter your first one so that is 100 percent where i would go for now next time i enter an nro hunter match i will enter as an amateur yeah open light or something yeah open light do something like that that way like because i'm i'm not accepting any help right now like um Matt Ritchie, absolutely phenomenal shooter. He's doing really well, um, but he's he's helping me a little bit mm -hmm. because I'm having having some issues mentally, mostly. Um, <laughs> so he's there to talk me off the edge. He's my emotional support shooter. Yeah, right. like I really think you gotta I should, have one. I need to have him a made a patch. You he's need my, a t-shirt or a patch. Yeah, yeah. I, he's my emotional support shooter. Yep. Like that would be brilliant for him. Like I just <laughs> came up with that. Um, but no, like, like having someone that like, and being able to be in a skills. And the one thing I noticed, and you, I mean, you've shot enough matches to know this across the entire community is if you're a lower level shooter and you come in, dude, they will help you. Oh, I mean, you great will community. succeed. Yeah. Great community. Yeah. We had a young shooter today. First match ever. Uh, yesterday he's trying to check in, trying to shoot for velocity, pulls up his binos cracked right through the lens and his laser range finding binos. That's Evan. That's Evan? Yes, yeah, that's and Evan. He's, he's rocking a pair of range finding binos that somebody Good. was like, hey, I don't know you, but, yeah. but I want you to use these so you have a good match. Yeah. Yep. Well, and that's, I, I think that that would be universal. I think, I think if a piece of gear goes down, well, I was sitting there and I had a yard sale on a, on a stage and I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm missing something. 
And here comes my shooting bag. Yeah. My my game changer bag. Yep. Like he's like, oh, you dropped it. You you left it on. And I was like, dude, thank you. Yeah. Like that's incredible. Like it's such a welcoming community. Yep. And I, and I, I I just hate that people get wrapped around the axles of ego. Because, dude, leave your ego at the door because this is it's fun. It's an open community. Yeah. It can be fun if you if you let it. It could be. But yeah. I've seen people suck the fun out of it, too. And generally in this community, those folks, they don't stick yeah. around very long. Because You're it's right. not fun for them. And it's nobody else is engaging with them because it's not fun. To yeah. We don't like somebody. you. Yeah, right? Don't, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Yeah. Or it's girl. A it's Maybe a there's a girl out there that would be like that. But like, And we've got uh, Jessica, yeah. who is in our group. She's doing really good. She in the we shot fourteen stages I think today. She's probably kicking my ass. Stages one through five, it was like, all right, we're you know we're helping yeah. you through this. You're going to be okay. Stages five through fourteen, she's crushing it. No kid. Yeah, she's, that's she's, so cool. Yeah, like, and like she doesn't get out and do this all the time. Like right. we have access to. I mean, yeah. she's in Denver, Colorado. Just moved from California, and like. She's, this isn't her world, but she's doing it. And she's, she's immersed herself in it. Yeah. yeah. Like she's doing really well. And that's, that's really cool to see. I mean, we're all shooting the same Hornady 108 ELDMs and like they are performing, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you guys, I've been telling this to Jessica all day today. This fall, when she's got to take, you know, you get that one shot and it's 350 yards and she can do a high kneeling shot from a tripod oh my because she's already done it a hundred times. Yeah. When you get that, you get that that hunting situation. It's it's a chip shot. Me, you, where last year, dude, she wouldn't have taken you that have, shot. You have just summed up like what what benefit an NRL hunter match would do for you. Yeah. Because am I probably going to go out next year in Oklahoma and just jump out there and take a six hundred yard cold bore shot? I probably won't. But I will tell you this much. A 400, 450 yard shot seems like a chip shot. On a tripod, you feel rock solid. Yeah. And again, you've you got that muscle memory. Yeah. You beat the steel up. You know exactly how it feels, how to sink in that position. Yeah. And it, it yeah, the show's over. It's You're going to put that bullet exactly where you want it's it. It's done. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of it. So, all right, Seth. I appreciate you, dude. Absolutely. Um, thanks, for having, thanks for having me out, man. I, yeah. I know you could have gone anywhere you wanted to to invite media but i really do appreciate it um this has meant a lot to me yeah uh, because this is something that i get to pass on to my boys oh, so yeah. I, I i do love that because they will benefit from this so all right all you gun talk hunters you know the drill keep those muzzles pointed in a safe direction and always be on the hunt